In this lesson, I'm going to show you about the sponge tool and using that to add saturation to a picture, as well as the unsharp mask filter. All right, first the sponge tool to add saturation. Let's pick something that needs some saturation. Um, that boat's pretty saturated, but let's see what else is up here. Mm, let's go back to the island girl. Could use some saturation in that picture. So the sponge tool. Where did the sponge tool go? Ah, under the dodge tool, I forgot. Too many tools. Okay. Sponge tool. All right. Let's get a bigger brush. That'll work. This is on saturate. So you can saturate or desaturate. So we could make something black and white just specific sections if we wanted to. But what I'm going to choose, you know, if we're going to do that, I don't want to use this picture for some reason. Maybe because we just used it. But let's, uh, let's pick um, the boat. Okay, let's desaturate the lake, if we can. It'll be hard just to get a certain section desaturated, but we can do it. Heck, let's just try to desaturate the whole thing. Remember, the more we release, see how it's desaturated those hills back there? So they're more black and white than anything. The sky's being desaturated. Alright, this will add a neat effect basically going from a black and white background slowly fading I didn't even think about doing this before slowly fading into a a color picture Alright, that's kind of neat. So you're basically, that's like a fade from black and white to color. And you've seen effects like this where um, they'll have the whole painting black and white with just like the little girl holding the rose and the rose is red. Things like that. So you can paint whatever section you want. Saturate basically means take the color. I mean, desaturate means to take the color out. Saturate means to make the colors more um, deep and um, vibrant. So there's one way to use the sponge tool to desaturate and saturate just brushed effects as regards those two amendments. All right. Let's move on to the unsharp mask. So let's exit out of here. And let's pick something that needs a little bit of sharpening. And I'm guessing this old picture, we might have some difficulty doing it. But the old picture definitely could use some sharpening up. So we'd go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And basically, let's try to sharpen just the, the eyes, mouth, and nose. 
All right, so how much do we want to sharpen it? That's the amount. The radius, in other words, around which pixels, how many pixels around where, um, around those pixels do you want to be crisp and sharp? And the threshold for, um, for that radius. So let's uh, notice in the preview. See, you notice how this got all sharp in here? Where his tie is. Ah, see, now I... Ah, you see what happens when you bring it all the way up? It starts looking like one of them old photographs. This could add a specific effect. You ever seen those old pictures of Elvis? <laughs> when he was really young? That's what that reminds me of. Hey, it kind of looks like me. Now, um... So that's adding more of an effect to it. But you can experiment with these levels. And even like that isn't bad. Maybe more like that. It adds a nice little crispness to a little bit of the sections of it. Mostly this down here looks more sharp. Ah, you just saw his eye come out there more sharp. So, the unsharp mask allows you more flexibility as far as um, your sharpening effect, and not just how much, how sharp do we want it, but what's the radius, what's the amount of pixels surrounding that that you want me to sharpen, and then gives you a threshold. So, depending on what picture you're using, let's try to pick another one that might allow us to see this a little better. Let's grab that dog. Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Ah, oh, look at that. How sharp his ears became on that. Wow, and his paw is just totally stuck out there, huh? So depending on the effect you want, a sharpen tool, or should I say the, uh, the unsharp mask, can work very effectively.